here we go again. Today is day one of me participating in the 75 hard challenge. For those who don't know what that is, I will explain all of the rules and intricacies in a second. But full disclosure, I've actually already done this once before. Funnily enough, I think it was also in April of last year whenever I started. But I completed this challenge last year, so I know exactly what I'm getting myself into. And let me just say, they don't call it 75 hard without reason. It is quite, quite challenging. Um, and before I fully dive into this video, let me please just say if this kind of content upsets you in any form or fashion, I am going to be talking about workouts. I'm going to be talking about diet. I'm going to be talking about hydration, wellness. It's going to be very health and fitness heavy. So if any of those topics upsets you or makes you feel uncomfortable in any way, please don't watch this video because it's really going to be focusing on a lot of that. There is like someone weed whacking out side of my house. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm so sorry. Anyway, if you are unfamiliar with 75 hard, I figured I would take you guys along this first week with me, this journey and kind of show you guys how I'm finding my footing with the challenge, all that good stuff. But first, let me just explain the rules, what the heck it is in the first place. Essentially for 75 days, every single day, you have to complete a certain amount of tasks without failure. And if you do fail one of the tasks, you have to start over from day one. Now, full disclosure, I actually tried to start this challenge on April 10th, this was the day right whenever I got back from my bachelorette party, tried to start it and I failed. I did, I failed on day three. So I am starting over today, but this is actually a good opportunity for me to take you guys along with me anyway. So it kind of works out. Today is April 13th, April 13th. And now I have 75 days to do the following. The first rule is to do two 45 minute workouts, okay? Every single day, not just Monday through Friday, every day. So essentially you'll be getting an hour and a half at least of exercise in on a daily basis. The workouts can be whatever you want, weightlifting, yoga, a walk. The only rule is that one of those two workouts has to be completed outside regardless of the weather. And I don't mean outside like in a garage under an awning or anything like that. No, like in the elements outdoors. Thankfully I live in LA so I don't have to worry about that too much but that's one of the rules. Two 45 minute workouts every single day, one has to be completed outside. The second rule is to drink one gallon of water every single day. Speaking of, where's my water bottle? Okay, this is my water bottle. As you guys know, this is something that I do on a regular basis anyway, and it started from this challenge last year and I kept it as a part of my routine. This is my Camelback, it's just one liter. So as long as I have four of these, that equates to a gallon. So I have had two today. I've had two today already and I need to get two more, two more in. But that's one of the rules, a gallon of water every single day. Yes, you pee a lot. But it's really interesting to see how your body adjusts and it acclimates to it and ends up really enjoying that much hydration, or at least for me, that's what happened. So that is the second rule. The third rule is that you have to follow a diet. And similar to the flexibility in the workouts and how you can pick and choose what you want to do. So the same goes with the diet. If you want your diet to be just tracking and hitting specific macros, that works. If you want to follow a very strict ketogenic diet, that can be your thing. It could be like calorie counting, whatever it is for you, just as long as you follow it and stick to it. Which brings me actually to the fourth rule, which is no cheat meals and no alcohol. She says as she cries tears of Pinot Noir. So no cheat meals, no alcohol whatsoever, not even a cheat bite, definitely not a cheat day. So whatever you have chosen as far as your preferred diet for the challenge, you cannot steer from that. Throughout this video too, I'll talk about exactly what I'm doing for all of these things, but just wanna lay the groundwork for the rules first. So the next one, the next rule is to read 10 pages of nonfiction. It has to be nonfiction every single day. This one I love, and it really has made me fall in love with the nonfiction genre, specifically more self-help and wellness type of books. And it's quite simple to do, just 10 pages. That's all you have to do every single day. You can do more if you want, but as long as you get those 10 in, then you're good to go. And then the last rule, which actually is one of the hardest because it's so easy to forget, is to simply take a progress picture of yourself every day. And that is the only thing that I have done so far today. I just like to do it before I get dressed in the morning. And also it makes it easy to do early on. So that way I, I don't forget. <laughs> also, there is this 75 hard app that you can download. You do have to pay for it. I think I honestly think, but I bought it last year, so I have it again. I just like reset, reset it. Anyway, so anyway, that's the only thing I've done today is just take the progress picture 
good for me, good start. <laughs> but I figured that every day as I kind of show you what I'm doing and also just filming myself to hold myself accountable in this first week, I should also take each of those days and maybe dive more into the specifics. So today, today let's start talking about the outdoor workout. Last year, whenever I did this, I would say 90% of the outdoor workouts that I did was just walking around the neighborhood. I almost always did it on my lunch break. It was such a nice way to get outside, get fresh air, also so make sure to check this off the list. And it's fun, you kind of fall in love with different areas of your neighborhood or city that you might not otherwise see just driving around town. But I also did some yoga outside. I even did a few virtual classes outside as well. But for the most part, it's gonna be walking. Also, since this is my first week, I am going to ease into it. I like to mix up my exercises. One that's a little bit, a little bit lower intensity. And then the second one, maybe something higher intensity. But honestly, if you do this challenge, you can walk twice for 45 minutes minutes and it counts. Again, the workouts can be whatever you want it to be, but we are starting with a nice outdoor walk. I am on my lunch break and I figured I would take you guys along with me for, for a nice little walk. Let's see, let's see what we can see outside. Here we go. walked for 51 minutes and just over two and a half miles. I'll tell you what, walking I think is one of the best things that you can do for your body. It is so nice. And especially just getting fresh air, walking around, and I saw like 12 dogs. It was great, yeah. No, I mean, I'm sure at some point I might do like yoga outside. I don't know, mix it up a little bit with my outdoor uh, exercises for 75 hard. Like maybe I'll do bands at some point, resistance bands, stuff like that. But there is something so, Cat, can you not? <laughs> My cat is knocking the tripod. But there is something just so therapeutic about getting outside and just walking. I feel like it's very meditative in many ways. I love it. And funny enough, it looks like it's about to rain. I missed it. I don't know. I don't think it's in the forecast, but if it is gonna rain, I definitely timed it perfectly. Okay, I have to finish up work for the day, but then I'm gonna take you guys along with me and just check off everything else for today. And then tomorrow, uh, I'll dive into a different one of the rules and kind of how I'm approaching it. So yeah, let's go. Let's keep going with day one. I just parked at a good old Barry's boot camp. I'm gonna get my second workout of the day in. For the indoor exercise or the second one of the day, I try and do something a little bit more challenging. Some days I walk twice, I'm not gonna lie. And I'll keep it like low impact for both exercises. But usually for the second one, I try and make it a bit more challenging. So like hot yoga, a hit class, just like berries, Pilates, boxing, running, just something that's different or at least a little bit more intense. With that said though, our bodies clearly need 
need rest. So those double walk days or a walk day paired with like some more restorative yoga are so, so important. Don't sleep on that. But yeah, about to head into Barry's boot camp. I absolutely love it. It's intimidating if you have never taken a, a Barry's class before. I totally understand sometimes it seems a little daunting, but take it from me as someone who is not a runner, who struggles in that area. I, I still absolutely love it. All of the instructors that I've experienced have been just so, so lovely. And even aside from this 75 hard challenge, I try to come at least three to four times a week. But of course now I'm, I'm gonna be showing up a lot more often. <laughs> anyway, I'm saying all this. They actually just started an ambassador program. If you've never taken one of their classes and there's one in your area, or if you're traveling to an area and there's a studio in that location, they started this ambassador program where you can get two classes for the price of one. So if you've never tried it, you're a first timer and you want to just try two classes for the price of one, I'm gonna put a code that they gave me on the screen right here. So if it's always interest you, but you've never tried it yourself, I guess this is your sign to try it because you're getting two, two classes for the price of one. So yeah, just use the code that's on the screen, also in the description box. That'll get you two classes for the price of one. Um, and I think my reward for anyone that uses it is that I get a class credit or something like that, but I come all the time anyway. So, so time to get our second workout in. Today, so far, I have done my outdoor walk. I have read 10 pages. Oh, and I took my progress picture. So I've done those three things. Workout number two is about to happen. And I have had three out of four of these. And honestly, I'll go through most, if not all of this during the Barry's class. So if I have any left, I'll finish it with dinner. Kyle and I are actually going to sushi tonight, which I don't eat fish. So this is kind of a good way for me to show you guys how to like modify, or at least how I modify going out to a restaurant. And thankfully sushi is so easy uh, to modify for someone like me because I usually get like a side of tofu and then I'll get a cucumber and avocado roll. And that, I mean, that's it. It's all plant-based it's all healthy it all fits my rules and unfortunately it will be happy hour but I will not participate all right guys it is time to go in I have eight minutes until class starts so I actually have to run in there right now and yeah time to go get incredibly incredibly sweaty <laughs> let's go day three and today is a Saturday so I was able to get everything done except for finishing my gallon this is the last bit so I have just this to go but it's only five o'clock so I should be able to finish it pretty quickly I took my progress picture this morning I went on an early morning walk with a girlfriend of mine and then I went to a Barry's class around noon so everything is done except for that finishing my water and then reading my 10 pages so I figured today I would tell you guys about the whole reading 10 pages thing, what I'm planning to read, etc. So I'm starting on this book. It's by Brianna Weiss, who if you don't know who she is, she is a phenomenal writer for Thought Catalog and has tons of just very inspirational self-help type of content. And with 75 Hard, the requirements for the 10 pages a day are that it has to be nonfiction, which is great for me. I actually prefer to read nonfiction. And this book specifically, it's called The Mountain Is You, and it's a book about self-sabotage and um, on the front it says, the mountain is you transforming self-sabotage into self-mastery. And then on the back it says, 
This book is about self-sabotage, why we do it, when we do it, and how to stop doing it for good. I actually got this book quite a long time ago and started it, but for whatever reason, it just fell through the cracks and I never finished it. But I feel like this topic resonates with so many people, whether they are just aware that they have self-sabotaging behaviors whenever it comes to fulfilling their dreams and goals, uh, or if they're unaware. I think all of these points that I've at least read so far can be so useful. So this is the one part of the challenge that honestly, I wish I kept with me after I completed it last year and I did pick it back up especially at the beginning of 2023 if you've been watching my channel you know that is something I've been trying to implement but because of my schedule I just well let's be real I've just made a lot of excuses not to do it so um, I'm actually really excited that now it's a part of a challenge I have to do it and I am currently on also wait can we talk about how cute this Blathers bookmark is? It's from Etsy. If I can remember the link, I'm, I'll put it in the description box, but I got it on Etsy. So Animal Crossing lovers, this is so cute. Anyway, I am currently on page 55. So gonna read from page 55 to 65 and then, uh, and then we'll call it a day. I actually have a barbecue to go to, which as per usual with barbecues, I usually just like bring like my own fruit and of course I'll bring my water with me and that'll be fine. But I'm excited to see friends. So let's get these pages in and done. It is day number four, it's Sunday. And so far I have done three, four things, four things so far. I took my progress picture first thing in the morning. Then I knocked out my first exercise. Today is a double walk day. <laughs> One was just here right in front of my desk. I wanted to get some stuff done, just a little bit of work done. And we actually had uh, some family time with Kyle's family because we were not in town for Easter last week. So we were kind of making up for that this Sunday. Anyway, so my first exercise was an indoor walk and then I just completed my outdoor door walk. Even though I went to the grocery store yesterday, I did forget almond milk, which is kind of important for me. So after my walk, I made just a quick run to the store and now we're here. Oh, and I read my 10 pages in the car on the way to spend time with his family. So those things have already been knocked out of the way. And since it is Sunday, Sunday is usually the day where I prepare lunches. And might I just say for this challenge, I feel like for success, it's pretty imperative to prep something. I'm not saying all, you know, 21 meals of the week and snacks included, but just depending on what you set as your diet or whatever, it's kind of nice to take guessing out of the equation and just have everything prepared ahead of time so you can like grab it and go, which I'm no stranger to prepping my lunches for sure. Um, but with all of that said, I figured this would be a good day to at least tell you what I'm doing for my quote unquote diet for the 75 heart challenge, which I am doing exactly what I did last year because it worked really Really well for me and even though it is very simple it is also incredibly difficult all at the same time. So I already follow a vegan plant-based diet just on the day-to-day -day, but of course that doesn't ex exclude french fries and soda. You know there are certain things that are still very unhealthy <laughs> that are part of a plant-based diet so my rule is to have no nothing that I would consider like junk food. No candy, no cakes, no soda, no french fries, burgers, pizza, like anything in that 
world, that is what I'm eliminating. But with that said, I'm not doing like a 100% non-processed kind of situation because I am of course having protein powder. I am of course having tofu, which is like minimally processed, but still. All of that is still very much on the table, but yeah, no, it's still so hard even just to not have a single French fry for two and a half months. It's not, it's not easy. No potato chips, no, no nothing, none of that, none of it. And this is easily the hardest part of the challenge, I would say. That and maybe the outdoor exercise just because it's not like super convenient. But tomorrow, I think I'll share a little bit about tips and tricks to kind of navigate those cravings, or at least what I found to be successful. Because again, one of the other rules is no cheat meals, no cheat bites, no cheat nothing. And of course, no alcohol. So tomorrow, I'll probably talk about how I combat those two things. But I figured today, since it's already my meal prep day, I'll just take you guys along. And um, I'll show you what I'm going to make just for my lunches this week. I usually just prep my lunches and then for dinner um, I like to actually just cook something something a little bit different again I don't prep every single thing but I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do for lunch this week it's pretty similar to what I typically make I usually do some kind of like pasta salad situation and yeah after lunch I almost always have a protein smoothie but I never prep that of course <laughs> my brain's a little foggy anyway let's go prep some lunches <laughs> Okay, it is day five. And first, let me just say the fatigue is real. <laughs> Last year, whenever I uh, did 75 hard, I remember the first week being a struggle, not in the first few days, because I feel like there is that adrenaline and excitement to it. But yeah, right around day four, five, six, that's when it kind of hits you and you're like, oh wow, I'm doing a lot to my body right now. But thankfully that actually wore off uh, by the time that I got outside this afternoon, thankfully. And today I've actually completed, I've completed everything. This is the first day I think I've actually done everything now that I'm actually talking to you. 
Woke up, took my progress picture, and then I went on a walk with a friend of mine at lunch. So that was my outdoor workout. Um, oh, I actually read before that. I read my 10 pages, then went to a berries class. And today I did double floor, they call it. So if you're not a runner, if you don't like to run, do not have no interest in running. You can do what's called double floor, which essentially is just, you know, weights, bands, that kind of stuff. Still a very challenging workout, but I digress. <laughs> and just finished this right here. Just finished my fourth one. So the gallon is complete too. I, I've done everything. Now, yesterday I was talking to you guys about what I'm doing in terms of like my diet and nutrition for this challenge. But today I kind of want to touch on the rule that's adjacent to this, which is no cheat meals, no alcohol. She says with her bar cart fully stacked behind her. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not touching it for uh, for the next 70 days. It is hard, especially on the cheat meal front. Like you can't even have a bite. Like if you aren't having sugar or chocolate, even a morsel chocolate chip, that essentially is not allowed. Yes, it is very aggressive and restrictive. However, there are a few things that I have noticed really, really help me combat certain cravings while still one, adhering to the diet I put in place to myself, but also completely satisfy the those cravings for those like junky types of foods that I'm personally not allowing myself to have. Now, first and foremost, let me say that I don't typically crave fried foods too much. And if I am craving something like a French fry, usually it's because of the saltiness more so than the actual like oil and, you know, fried element to that potato. So I almost always crave something salty and then also something sweet. So that dynamic is pretty difficult to combat whenever you are on, you know, a pretty strict plant-based diet with no junk whatsoever. So how do you, how do you deal with that, Katie? Well, guess what? I'm going to tell you. Also, it is difficult. Let me just say willpower is an element that just is an element of this whole challenge, but of course, specifically this little rule that is in place. And I'll just start by saying, don't underestimate the power of a really good tasting protein powder, something that actually tastes good. <laughs> and for me, I usually don't mix my protein protein powder with just water. With that said, the brand that I use, you can do that and it tastes amazing. I actually got Kyle the same brand that I use um, in the non-vegan version because he he's not one. And it's a magical charms flavor, like Lucky Charms the cereal. And he just mixes it with water and it smells like the cereal. Like it smells like the marshmallows from the cereal. Anyway, that's a tangent about that one specific flavor. Anyway, I get the vegan protein powder. <laughs> but what's nice is there are flavors like uh, French toast or iced oatmeal cookie, which is one of my favorites for sure. They have like key lime pie and all, so many different flavors. They also have your basic chocolate, vanilla and all of that, but getting a protein powder or even a, like a protein bar, whatever like kind of supplement that fits into whatever diet you're putting into place. I feel like don't underestimate the power of that because having like today I had a chocolate banana green protein smoothie. I just threw some spinach in there and it really does for me at least cure those sugary sweet cravings. But then of course, I don't know if anyone else is like this, right after I have something sweet and cure those cravings, immediately I want something salty. And when I'm not doing the challenge, that would be like potato chips, you know, french fries, like I was saying. But since those are off the table until late June, instead what I usually do, I actually don't have it on me right now, but there is a popcorn at Trader Joe's. It's an olive oil and sea salt popcorn. And it is phenomenal. Um, I love getting that. Obviously it doesn't have butter or anything like that in there. Also salted nuts, salted peanuts, uh, pistachios, sunflower seeds. Oh my gosh, sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds for sure. All of those really help my salty cravings. Absolutely 100%. So do like cut up bell peppers and hummus. I know you guys see me eat that all the time, but making sure that I'm salting those, maybe putting on some cracked black pepper, maybe even some nutritional yeast that helps satisfy that craving too for me. And also dried seaweed as well. You can get little dried seaweed packets and those are incredibly salty. So that helps. But what I'm trying to say are there are many ways to kind of navigate all of the rules that you put in place while still adhering to them and also satisfying your craving. So it's like a win-win. The one thing that I want to show you tonight, this is a newer discovery of mine. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'm sure you already saw it. I put it on my stories a few days ago, but this is a newer development, but because I am very worn out from this challenge, it is very physically demanding. Something that is very important is getting like really quality sleep at night. And I usually have no trouble falling asleep, but I want to make sure that I'm staying asleep and getting like tons and tons of rest, like good quality sleep. So that way my body is healing. Anyway, I have been 
really into magnesium right before bed. I even have a friend who was like, yeah, absolutely. Like I do that every single night. It helps me so much to sleep. You can also take it throughout the day to relax and whatnot. But anyway, I'm on a tangent now, but it makes sense, I promise. It's a win-win for me to like get that quality sleep by taking magnesium. But also there is this chocolate sea salt. I swear to God, it's a chocolate sea salt powdered magnesium. And it's just like a teeny, I think it's a teaspoon. It's a tiny little scoop. I'm sure you can put it in water. I've never tried. My instinct whenever I saw that it was chocolate sea salt was to mix it with almond milk. So I've never tried it actually with water. I just put it with almond milk. I'm sure you could do it with like regular cow milk. You could do it with oat milk, whatever. Just a tiny thing of that magnesium, some almond milk, and then I mix it together. And I swear to you, this is without exaggeration. It tastes like liquefied ice cream. It does. Even earlier today, whenever I was going on a walk with my friend, she's doing Whole30 right now, which is obviously a different challenge. But we were talking about how we like combat different like sugar cravings and sweet cravings. And the minute that I tried this combination, I was like, Lauren, let me like, I think I gave her like five or six scoops in a little Tupperware thing. And I was like, here, try this. She has oat milk that she's gonna try it with and I want her to report back because I've tried it with almond milk. Anyway, I was like, this is a, a life source. Again, not only does it help with sleep, which is what its sole purpose is, but honestly, I've been just having it at night because it tastes like liquefied ice cream. But anyway, I just wanted to share those few workarounds or not even workarounds really, because I do genuinely enjoy consuming all of these things, but especially whenever I do get that, that urge to have like french fries, candy, ice cream. Those are just a few ways that I have learned to kind of navigate it, follow the rules of the challenge while still very much enjoy myself, enjoy what I'm eating as well. All right, and it is the end. It is the end of day five. I'm actually gonna go have that magnesium drink right now. Tomorrow is day six. I think I'm actually gonna do an early morning yoga class, uh, mix it up actually finally for once. So I think I'm gonna do that first thing in the morning. Um, yeah, so if that happens, <laughs> then I'll take you guys along with me. It is the end of day six. I feel like I am looking more and more disheveled as this week goes on, but we're just gonna ignore that, okay? <laughs> I have done everything today. Uh, all the boxes are checked yet again now that I'm talking to you. I did make it to that 6.30 a.m. yoga class. It was really nice. I wanna go back next week. It wasn't hot yoga, but it was a slightly heated room. I think it's like 85 to 95 degrees. I don't, I don't know. It's heated, but it's not like technically hot yoga or Bikram yoga. Anyway, I really enjoyed it though. It was so much fun. As per usual, took my progress picture right after that. I did it once I got home. So first workout was done, progress picture was done. Took my outdoor walk, made sure that I stuck to my diet with no cheats or anything like that, and just finished my gallon of water, which honestly doing a heated yoga session <laughs> helps with that a lot because I downed my first one of these very, very quickly during that. However, this came in the mail last night. I have to show you guys Boom, look at this. New water bottle, who is she? So this I took on my walk. This is a, um, it's called an H2O capsule. And this is half a gallon right here. So technically, technically I could have two of these and be done. And I tried it for the first time today going on my walk and it is so convenient. Like it has a little pocket, it has a little pocket right here. I love that it has a strap. So I honestly, I just put my keys, my wallet, anything that I needed, my phone, all of that just right here. So that way I didn't have to 
carry a purse and my water bottle. But I really like it. This company sent this to me. It's like not sponsored, but they were just nice enough to send one to me and I really like it. I can only imagine this is super convenient too for like long road trips, hiking for sure. But particularly for this challenge, like I'm not the person to carry around a whole, whole ass gallon, a whole ass gallon water bottle. Like that's just not me. I'm already 5'3", so anything that's like slightly larger size. It kind of looks ridiculous whenever I hold it, but this half a gallon, it's not that bad. It's pretty good. And honestly, the strap makes it kind of fun. So it's like, it's like a really cool fitness purse. Ow, I just hit myself in the face. Anyway, but I thought that was very serendipitous that I got this water bottle on the same day. Well, technically I got it last night, but I used it for the first time today on the day when I was going to talk about this whole rule 475 hard about drinking a gallon of water a day. Also, yes, I am wearing the same sweatshirt as I did yesterday. Feel free to roast me in the comments. It will not make me upset. Whenever I first started this challenge, uh, the first time around when I did this last year, I remember the gallon, it, it seemed like the most daunting thing because again, I am relatively petite. I was like, where will it go? Where will the water go? <laughs> That's a lot of water. And it is, it's, it's, it is a large amount of water. And for the first few days, if you decide, even if you don't decide to do this challenge, but if you decide to tackle maybe a gallon of water or really just increasing your water intake in general, maybe you'll experience what I experienced, which is the following. For the first few days, I bloated really badly. I think my body just wasn't used to all of that water intake and it wanted to store as much of it as possible because it wasn't accustomed to getting it on a regular basis. So I bloated really, really badly. And then on day three, I think it was, I had like awful like diarrhea. And again, I think my body was just confused. It was almost like in shock by the amount of water I was consuming. But right after that, it leveled out. I think it took about four to six or seven days for my body to be like, oh, okay, this is actually really good. And then ever since then, I swear by drinking this much water. Now I will say, do it early. Like if I have one tip for this challenge, get your water in as early as possible because it is the worst thing finishing it right before you go to bed or realizing that you haven't had your X amount of ounces left to complete your gallon and just chugging it before you go to sleep because guess what? You will wake up a lot in the middle of the night. So get it out of the way early, early, early. That's why I always make sure to at least just knock back a liter first thing in the morning before I get up. Or sorry, not before I get up. I'm awake at that point. Sorry, my brain is so fried today. Can you tell? But knocking out a liter, you know, before I have my coffee, before I really like settle into work for the day, making sure it's just done and out of the way before I really like officially start my day. But your body acclimates. Like do know that your body does acclimate. Take it from a petite person who is very afraid of this element of the challenge. It's still, it's going to be, it's going to be okay. And not only is it going to be okay, it makes you feel so much better. And you need that kind of hydration, like some really amped up hydration. If you're exercising twice, at least 45 minutes a day anyway, you're going to have to replenish your tank. You're going to have to refuel yourself. Also as a part of the challenge, uh, it has to be plain water, just plain, no crystal light in there, no tea in there, no whatever, whatever. It has to be just like plain old water. And for me, I'm just a room temperature girly. I know a lot of people think that's like blasphemous because they like ice, like super, super cold water. I just like room temp. I find it a, a lot easier to drink. And since I run cold naturally, whenever I put ice in my water or I have super, super cold at any beverage, it just makes me always cold. So I just stick to room temp. I think it's easier to drink, especially in this kind of quantity. But hey, you do you. You know what works best for you. It's just gotta be plain water. Obviously ice can be in it, but like no flavors or additives or anything like that. That's part of the rules too. And yeah, um, I'm actually gonna link these guys. They gifted it to me, the H2 2O capsule. I've only used it once, but I did really enjoy it, especially for the walks because it was so convenient to carry. And I really like too, so they have this kind of lid, but they also, let me grab it. If you don't like that kind of valve, they, uh, they also have this kind of mouthpiece included where it's just a hole if you prefer to like tip it and pour it. Um, but I guess I like to feel like a baby. So that's why I like the, the bottle element. <laughs> anyway, clearly I'm getting a little bit delirious. Uh, if there's anything I can say about the water, again, it's to knock it out as early as possible. You'll thank me later. For this first week in general, you're going to experience bloating the first few days, or at least I definitely did. But your body will definitely even out over, I would say, at least the first week. That's what I experienced. And let me just go ahead and plug in the disclaimer. I am not a nutritionist, dietitian, fitness, anything. I'm just a human being doing this challenge and letting you guys 
know my personal experiences with it, so that's a big ol' asterisk on this whole entire video, but, but I've noticed an astronomical difference in the way that I feel, in the way that I recover, in the way that my skin, hair, everything feels and looks when I have this much water. It's, I really think it's like the secret source to all life. <laughs> Thank you again to the H2O capsule team for sending me this. I'm absolutely gonna use it on all of my walks, hikes, etc. Like it's so convenient to carry and I just like that it holds so much water. And they also have a ton of fun colors too. I just liked the black one to keep it kind of simple, but they have some really fun pastels and patterns and stuff. So I'll link them in the description if you wanna check them out. Again, not sponsored, but they were just kind enough to give this to me and I really like it. Day seven is tomorrow. We will talk tomorrow. Yep, day seven. Last day of the week. Definitely not the last day of the challenge though. <laughs> All right. is complete. I figured I would end this video, end this whole week, just kind of wrapping up some final thoughts on this first week, uh, first of many weeks of the 75 hard challenge, but um, I did want to touch on the progress picture too. That's the only rule I didn't really dive into on a specific day. First and foremost, the reason that I haven't showed it in this video, or at least show myself taking the progress picture, is because I do it in my underwear. <laughs> like that's really the truth, and I just don't want YouTube to flag the content. That's reason one. Reason number two is, you you don't see a lot of progress physically in the first week and that's with any kind of you know exercise diet regimen you're not gonna see progress right away more often than not but man do you feel it I feel so so good and whenever I complete this challenge yeah I'll share my my first day picture I'll show my last day picture I'm happy to do that but also I think it is so important to note that this is not just a challenge to improve physical aesthetics or to shape your body and while the physical benefits are are great and you feel so good and there is that element of confidence that comes into play. I just didn't want to emphasize that element of this challenge above the other really great habits that you instill uh, while participating in 75 hearts. So anyway, that's the TLDR on the whole <laughs> progress photo thing. And I'm also very aware that sometimes before and after pictures can seem very, you know, fat phobic and that is the last thing that I would ever want to convey on my channel too. So I figured today, day seven, seven out of 75, I figured I would just do a little recap of the week, some things that I've learned, maybe some best practices. The first being very solid quality rest is a non-negotiable <laughs> when doing this doing this challenge. It is exhausting physically, obviously, because you're doing so much exercise, but mentally it is so draining because you're having to schedule so many things, you're having to track so many things. It definitely at times feels like you're burning the candle at both ends. So really, really quality sleep at night is so important. It was either day four or five that I mentioned this, but I did hit that wall of fatigue and I realized, okay, listen to your body. And just doing that, making sure that I was resting thoroughly at night, turning off my electronics, turning off my brain, making sure my body is rested. Obviously it's hydrated. I mean, that's kind of inevitable, but physical rest is just oh so important. Also sunshine. <laughs> I mean, I think I spoke about this in one of my reset videos, but I swear vitamin D, like I'm just in front of a window right now, but just getting that sunshine in on these daily walks with my outdoor exercise, it is the mood booster that nature has given us, at least for me, and wow does it make a difference. I have found myself being so much more productive, so much happier. It is truly the easiest and most effective way to de-stress 
less, at least for me, because you're getting that element of sunshine in, but you're also moving your body just through very casual walks and it works. <laughs> Another big takeaway, and I did just touch on this, but it is to schedule, 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 everything especially things like the water you want to get that done as early as possible so that way you're not like waking up throughout the night i know i mentioned that yesterday same with the reading you know making sure you have a dedicated time to get those 10 pages in and also making sure you have a backup plan when life does get in the way whenever something does mess up your timeline or something gets in the way of a workout you know making sure that you do have like a slush fund of time so that way you can get everything done and not feel just completely depleted is very important last and final takeaway is just that i am so Oh, so excited. The first few days I feel like you're going off of adrenaline and then the next couple is when that fatigue sets in. But honestly, after the first week, you feel like you've started to find your footing, your groove, you know what's expected of you, you understand the basics, you understand the foundation. And something else too, even though I have completed this challenge before and I knew what I was getting myself into, it still, it still hits you like a ton of bricks. I've got to say, part of me was anticipating that it would be easier. It's not easier the second time around. It is just as hard. I just happen to know a few tricks and workarounds this time because I am more prepared doing it a second time, but it is not any easier. <laughs> Physically, I'm feeling really good. Mentally, I'm feeling sharp and it's only week one. I'm going to do my best to document as much as I can on my Instagram stories. I feel like that makes a little bit more sense. To, to archive my tasks, kind of hold myself accountable on the internet. But if you want monthly updates or just a, a halfway point update, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to do this challenge with me, it is not too late. I am uploading this video tomorrow. Well, for you guys, it's Thursday, but sitting right here, I'm recording this on Wednesday. I'm recording this on Wednesday the 19th and you will be watching it on Thursday the 20th. So it is not too late. If you want to jump on in this with me or do your own version of it, you absolutely can. Or if you just want an accountability buddy for whatever it is that you're doing, then hit me up on social media. Follow my Instagram, comment down below too. I would love to have an accountability circle in the comments. I'm excited. 2023, although it has already had its ebbs and flows in terms of high points and low points, I think it's still set up to be such a great year and I'm really excited for it. And everything that I did mention in this video, I'm going to put it in the description box in terms of like the protein powder I use, the berries boot camp discount code if you've never been to a class and you want to go, the magnesium, the water bottle that was sent to me, all that good stuff it will be in the description box so feel free to check any of that out yeah week one baby it's in the books it's done first of many to go but i will see y'all in the next one <laughs>